This week, we're talking about the West region of the United States. The West region is the largest of the five regions. Look at this map all the way on the west. You see outlined in green the West region. There are 11 states, and we break them into two groups. We have the mountain states that you see in red on the right-hand side, and then your Pacific states are in that turquoise blue on the left. Okay, your Pacific states are the ones that border the Pacific Ocean. The landforms, okay? We have the Rocky Mountains, the Sierra Nevada Mountains, the Cascade Mountains. And then we also have the Coast Ranges. So lots of mountains in the West. The largest mountain range is the Rocky Mountains, which form the eastern edge of the region. The Rockies begin far to the north in Canada. From there, the Rockies stretch south all the way to Mexico, across Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado. The Rocky Mountain Range is nearly 3,000 miles long and hundreds of miles wide. Along the Pacific Coast, more mountain ranges form a giant H on the map. The coast ranges make up the first long line of the H. The low mountains of the coast ranges seem to rise right out of the Pacific Ocean. They form cliffs in many places along the coast all the way up to Alaska. The highest mountain in the United States, Mount McKinley, is part of the coast range. Mount McKinley in Alaska is 20,300 and 20 feet high. The Sierra Nevada Mountains in the south and the Cascade Mountains in the north form the second long lines of the H. These mountains are covered with forests. Some of the mountains in the west are volcanic mountains. Volcanoes are openings in the Earth's surface Gas, steam, stones, ashes, and melted rock are forced through these openings. The melted rock is called lava. Volcanic eruptions happen, but not often. A famous eruption happened in 1980 when Mount St. Helens erupted explosively. This eruption destroyed trees, melted ice and snow, on the mountain and caused landslides and floods. Animals were killed and some people lost their lives. Here is Mount St. Helens. On the left is before the volcano erupted and on the right is a picture of the after. Several valleys lie in between the coast ranges the Sierra Nevada Mountains and the Cascade Mountains. Two of the valleys, Central Valley and Willamette Valley are covered with deep, rich soil. Many rivers travel through these two valleys. The Great Basin lies in the middle of the West region. A basin is a low, bowl-shaped landform that is lower than the land around it. The broad, flat valley of the Great Basin is mostly covered by the Great Basin Desert and the Mojave Desert. The Great Basin Desert is the largest desert in the United States. Death Valley, a part of the Mojave Desert, is the hottest, driest, and lowest place in the United States. Death Valley is 282 feet below sea level. The highest temperature ever recorded in Death Valley was 134 degrees Fahrenheit.
The Great Salt Lake is one of the largest lakes in the United States. The Great Salt Lake is about 75 miles long and 35 miles wide. The Great Salt Lake is very shallow. Most of the lake is only three feet deep. Unlike most lakes, the Great Salt Lake is full of very salty water. It is even saltier than the ocean. It is salty because several rivers flow into the Great Lake, but no water flows out of the lake. When water evaporates, the salt is left behind. The Great Salt Lake is too salty for fish. The only animals that live in the lake are tiny brine shrimp. Although they are small, brine shrimp are an important food source for the millions of birds that live around the lake. Dry and flat areas called salt flats surround the Great Lake. The salt flats were left behind when Lake Bonneville, a big prehistoric lake, dried up thousands of years ago. Believe it or not, the West region also has a rainforest. The rainforest that runs along the Pacific coast from California all the way to Alaska is the largest temperate rainforest in the world. Temperate rainforests are very wet, ancient forests that rarely freeze or get very hot. Temperate forests are also close to the ocean. Some of the large old trees, such as the giant redwoods, reach over 300 feet tall and live over 500 years. Alaska and Hawaii, being apart from the other western states, are very different from the other states in this region. Alaska is the largest of the United States, but it has the fewest number of people in any state. The northern part of Alaska is tundra, a cold, flat, treeless land. The Hawaiian Islands were formed from volcanoes, two of which are still active. Hawaii is made up of eight main islands. Its islands were made long ago by volcanoes that grew up out of the Pacific Ocean. Alaska has a unique climate. It is cold and wet for much of the year. Many places in Alaska receive as much as 100 inches of precipitation a year. I can't even say that word today. Alaska is farther from the equator than any other state. As a result, it is the coldest state. Alaska has short summers and long winters. The winters are very cold with strong winds. Its winters are so cold that houseflies can't survive there. Lakes and rivers in this area are frozen for most of the year. Hawaii lies closer to the equator than any other U.S. state. Its climate is sunny and warm all year round. Hawaii enjoys a warm climate, but not too hot due to cool ocean winds. There is a lot of rainfall. This helps palm trees and other tropical plants to grow year round. The island of Kauai has the wettest place on earth, receiving almost 40 feet of rain each year. The Pacific coast lies over many fault lines, which increase the dangers of earthquakes. The most famous is California's San Andreas Fault, which is more than 600 miles long. The most important natural resource in the West is the Pacific Ocean. Fishing is an important industry up and down the coast. There are many important ports along the Pacific Ocean. A port is a place for receiving ships and transferring cargo. Here, goods are traded with Japan and other areas in Asia. The 
Columbia River is an important river to the West region. Dams on the river help make a lot of electricity. Many businesses use this electric power. Farmers use water from the river to irrigate crops. The Columbia River waters irrigate more than 8 million acres of land. Both farmers and business people use the river for transportation. Many goods travel on the Columbia to ports along the Pacific Ocean. Soil is another important resource. In the Central Valley, there are many fruit and vegetable farms. The Central Valley is called America's Fruit and Salad Bowl. More than 150 fruits and vegetables are raised here. Crops grown in this area include apricots, almonds, strawberries, cabbage, lettuce, tomatoes, grapes, asparagus, oranges, cotton, corn, and many more. Potatoes, green beans, onions, and broccoli are also grown in the valley. Washington state is known for its apples. Washington produces more apples than any other state. The Central Valley supplies a lot of the food for the United States and for the rest of the world. Another valuable resource in the West region is oil. Oil was discovered in Alaska in the 1960s in the North Slope. The North Slope is near the Arctic Ocean. The oil was found once it was found, it needed to be transported to another area. The Trans-Alaska Pipeline was built to carry oil from the North Slope. From the North Slope, it travels to Prince William Sound. The oil is pumped into super tankers. These super tankers carry the oil to other parts of the U.S. and to the world. One stop is San Francisco, California. San Francisco has oil refineries. The refineries prepare the oil so it can be used in homes and in businesses. The Rocky Mountains are a source of many minerals. Deposits of copper, gold, and silver have been found within these mountains. Gold was found in California in 1848. During the gold rush, when people were moving west in search of riches, a small town in Colorado called Leadville was a popular mining spot for gold. The miners found some gold, but it was hard to separate the gold from the local sand. The miners found that the heavy brown sand that they were digging in was actually full of silver and lead. Then instead of a gold rush, there was a silver boom. More and more people moved to the area in search of silver. The city became one of the world's largest silver camps. Soon the silver boom ended, but other valuable minerals were found in this area as well. The steel produced in the West is used to manufacture other products. Aircraft are made in Southern California. The state's warm climate makes it perfect for testing airplanes. Aircraft is also made in Seattle, Washington. You will also find shipbuilding industries on the Pacific Coast. Fishing boats, tankers, and battleships are made in Washington State and in Hawaii. During the last 20 years, technology has really boomed in the West region. Silicone, a valu valuable mineral that is used to make computer parts, is found in Silicon Valley, California. The silicone is mined and sent to companies that manufacture computer parts. There are many research centers in the West. These research centers are owned by our government. They test missiles, aircraft, and weapons. In the Great Basin, there is valuable open space. Missiles and military weapons are tested there. 
The West region is a center of wood products. Wood products include lumber, plywood, cardboard, and paper. Much of the wood used in the United States comes from the West. Salt is another important thing that people get from the Great Salt Lake. In fact, over 4 million pounds of salt gets taken from it every year. Five companies get salt from the lake, including the Morton Salt Company, which makes the salt with the girl and the umbrella on the outside of the container. They get the salt by evaporating water in big ponds. When the water evaporates, the salt is left behind. This can take a long time. Idaho is home to vast potato farms, and the Idaho potato is sold by almost every supermarket in the United States. About three-fourths of Idaho's potato crop is now processed and sold as frozen french fries, instant mashed potatoes, or a similar product. The rest are sold as baking potatoes. Hawaii is famous for its pineapples. You can also find sugarcane in Hawaii. The plant is grown on plantations. Once it's harvested, it is sent to a sugar mill. This is where the table sugar we use is produced. Bananas, rice, coffee, and macadamia nuts are also grown in Hawaii. The West region's natural features have been popular with travelers. Some of the most beautiful national parks are located in this region, including Denali National Park in Alaska, Yosemite National Park in California, Bryce Canyon in Utah, and Yellow National Park, Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. You can visit the world's largest tree, a giant sequoia, in Sequoia National Park in California. Yellowstone National Park was established in 1872 as the world's first national park by the United States Congress. Yellowstone National Park covers 3,472 square miles. That's bigger than the state of Delaware and Rhode Island combined. There's an active volcano in the park. There are about 2,000 earthquakes there every year. The park also has more than 300 geysers. A geyser is a type of hot spring that shoots boiling hot water and steam into the air. Old Faithful is one of the most well-known geysers. The name Old Faithful was chosen because the geyser is predictable. It erupts about every 91 minutes. Each eruption lasts one and a half to five minutes. Today, up to four million people have come to visit Yellowstone each year. Monument Valley is located in Utah. Many strangely shaped sandstone formations fill this vast open desert valley. Monument Valley was created as materially eroded from the Rocky Mountains and was deposited and cemented into sandstone. The formations in the valley were left over after the forces of erosion worked on the sandstone. Many mining towns in the west started out of the way places where gold and silver deposits were found. In a brief time, they became boom towns. These towns grew quickly as thousands of prospectors and merchants moved to those new places. However, when the gold or silver ran out, the towns were abandoned. The miners moved on to new strikes and claims. Other citizens left too. Without money from the miners, these businesses closed. Soon, all that remained of the town were the deserted buildings and vacant lots. Many of these ghost towns are still standing today. People come to ghost towns to see what life was like during the gold rush. 
Denver, Colorado is home to the United States Mint. A mint is a factory where coins such as dimes, nickels, quarters, and pennies are made. Back in the 1860s, miners brought their gold here. Their nuggets were melted and turned into valuable gold bars. The mint began producing gold and silver coins in 1906. Today, the mint makes about 50 million coins every day. Disneyland is in Southern California. It is part of a giant entertainment industry. The industry began making movies. America's first movies were made in the Northeast. The movie makers needed sunny days to film outdoors. The Northeast is often cloudy and rainy. A few movie makers found the sunshine they needed in Southern California, Los Angeles, the second largest city in the nation, is now the home of Hollywood movie industry. The movie industry soon attracted a man named Walt Disney. Disney arrived in Southern California in 1923 with one big goal. He wanted to make people happy. Disney's cartoons delighted kids of all ages. So did his movies, television shows, and the Magic Kingdom of Disneyland. Disneyland opened in 1955. As many as 14 million people visit the park each year. Alaska and Hawaii are visited each year by tourists. People travel to Alaska to see its beautiful glaciers. There are cruise ships that sail through the waterways of Alaska. These cruise ships allow people to see the glaciers up close. Visitors go to Hawaii for its tropical weather and landscape. The warm weather year-round makes its beaches the place to visit. People also go there to visit the volcanoes of Hawaii. Denver, Colorado is the center of professional sports in the West Region. The city's major league teams include the Denver Broncos for football, the Colorado Rockies for baseball, the Denver Nuggets for basketball, and the Colorado Avalanche for ice hockey. Every January, Denver is the site of a national cattle show and rodeo. A favorite sport in Alaska is a dog sled race. The most famous is the Iditarod. This began in Anchorage, Alaska. It ends 1,150 miles later in Nome, Alaska. A few team of dogs and their mushers or drivers have covered that distance in amazing nine days. No wonder Alaska is called this event the last great race on earth. The native people of Hawaii developed a dance form known as the hula. The hula is traditionally accompanied by a chant or a song. Traditional instruments, such as the ukulele, also accompany the dance. Both men and women wear leis or flowers around their heads, ankles, and wrists, and necks. Originally, the hula was performed to honor ancient Hawaiian gods or a particularly powerful chief. It remains an important part, important part of the Hawaiian culture. The coastal waters of the Pacific Ocean provide abundant seafood, including crab, salmon, and octopus. This noodle dish is a local favorite in Hawaii. It's eaten any time of the day, and you can find it at most snack bars, coffee shops, and even at McDonald's. 
The native people of Alaska have an unusual version of ice cream. It's not creamy ice cream as we know it, but it's a concoction made from reindeer fat, seal oil, freshly fallen snow, fresh berries, and sometimes ground fish. Air is whipped in by hand so that it slowly cools into a foam. Women traditionally make Eskimo ice cream after the first catch of a polar bear or seal. Traditionally, it was always made for funerals or celebrations. Today, Eskimo ice cream is usually made with Crisco shortening instead of reindeer fat.